we need to be able to quantify the state of a solid gas system in order to determine if it is in equilibrium or how far it is from equilibrium. Let's consider a generic reaction that looks like this, where we have L and M reacting to form R and S. And the lowercase letters indicate the stoichiometric coefficients, and the capital letters are the species. We are going to define something that we call the affinity. For this reaction and we're going to label it with capital A and we're going to define the affinity as the chemical potential of the products minus the chemical potential of the reactants. So this essentially tells us something about the likelihood of this reaction happening. For the example reaction above we can then write the affinity in the following way, little r times the chemical potential of r plus little s times the chemical potential of s and then subtract off the chemical potential of the sum of the reactants. The case of equilibrium is when a is equal to zero. And according to our definition, that means that equilibrium is when the chemical, react, chemical potential of the products is equal to the chemical potential of the reactants. Now we have to keep in mind, we don't actually know the chemical potentials directly. We don't measure that. What we can get at, however, is the activity. And so we want to essentially rewrite this equation using the activities. So we're going to rewrite that equation using the activities and keeping in mind that the chemical potential of X is equal to the chemical potential of pure X plus RT ln times the activity of X, right? Or that this is equal to G naught of X plus RT ln A of X. So we're going to make this substitution here for each of the terms in the affinity equation on the previous slide so that we end up with the following. The affinity is equal to, so we have little r, and then we're going to write out this equation for r, for species r. And we have little s, and then we're going to write this out for species s. And then subtract the same, essentially, for the reactants. So the same for species l, and the same for species m. Let's do a little bit of rearranging here, and we're going to first pull out all of the sort of first terms, so we end up with R G R plus S G S minus L G L plus M G M, and then plus R T. Let's put another bracket in here, plus RT times, and then we have all of our second terms here. So R ln of AR plus S ln AS Okay, 
Now, let's take a look and see what these actually mean, what these different terms mean. So this first term here, all of this stuff is really just delta G naught for the reaction. The second term, using essentially the laws of how we operate with natural log, can be written as simply RT, LN, and then the, pro the product or quotient of these things, right? So we multiply the activities of the products, and then we divide by the activities of the reactants. And each of these is raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. So we can then rewrite this expression for A to say that A is delta G for the reaction under standard conditions plus RT times this stuff here. And we're going to actually call that Q as in the reaction quotient. And so we have this simplified expression now for the affinity of the reaction in terms of the Gibbs free energy of the reaction under standard conditions, plus this Q, which tells us something about sort of where the reaction is now, right, based on the stoichiometry of this. So let's take a look at what Q really means and what it tells us about the system. So once again, we had that Q equals this stuff in the brackets, so AR to the R, AS to the S, AL to the L, and AM to the little m. So depending on the state of the system, the system will evolve until it reaches a composition which is in equilibrium. And while that happens, that means that little r, little s, little l, and little m are changing, right? Sort of the amount of products and reactants is changing. So this system will evolve towards a state or towards values of r, s, l, and m, which are in equilibrium. When that happens, we can define an equilibrium constant, which is defined as, that's what the three lines mean, K is defined as the value of Q that corresponds to equilibrium. So this is just this quotient, but where the values of the stoichiometric coefficients correspond to the equilibrium state. So we said that equilibrium occurs when the affinity is equal to zero, which was that the chemical potential of the product was equal to the chemical potential of the reactants. So if we keep in mind that A is just equal to delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, at equilibrium, we know that A is equal to zero and we know that Q is equal to K. So we can rewrite this expression like this. So at equilibrium, it is the case that delta G naught is equal to negative RT ln of K. So if we know delta G for the reaction at a given temperature, we can find that equilibrium constant. We can do a little bit more rearranging here. So we can say that A is equal to negative RT ln of K because that is an equivalent way to write delta G naught plus RT 
ln of q, or a is equal to rt ln, and then this ratio of q to k. So the affinity of our reaction, right, the difference in these chemical potentials, is given by essentially the ratio of q, which tells us about the current state of the system compared to k, the equilibrium state of the system. So we can think of our reactions as sort of occurring along uh, this line, right? Where this is a line of, a, of uh, Q, essentially. So right in the middle, we have where A is equal to zero, and Q divided by K is equal to one. So this point actually equals K here. On this side, we have A greater than zero, which means that Q over K is greater than one. And over here we have a less than zero, or q over k less than one. So if we are on this side of the line, the chemical potential of the products is greater than the chemical potential of the reactants, which tells us that our products will decompose. They will go back to being reactants to balance this out. On the other side over here, it is the case that the chemical potential of the reactants is greater, which means that this can move towards equilibrium if the products form. So this is how we can use this concept of affinity to determine how our system is compared to equilibrium and which direction it will move.